So in this video, we're looking at probability some more. Um, and on this one, we're going to be using some of the counting principles we've learned so far this summer to help us do some um, probability problems. Uh, just a reminder, probability is always the number of positive outcomes over the number of total outcomes. Uh, so counting becomes very important because um, you're trying to count up positive outcomes and count up total outcomes. So if you look at example one, it says a class of eight boys and seven girls, two students are selected at random to serve as class representatives. What is the pro probability they select one girl and one boy? Well, on this particular problem, um, there's two different things you have to do. The first thing I always try to do is find the total outcomes. So in this case, when you're finding the total outcomes, it's going to be uh, you got 15 people that you're choosing from, eight girls, seven boys, so 15 total people. And you're selecting two of them, so the probability, or not the probability, the total number of outcomes is going to be 15 choose two. And that's going to be your total number of outcomes. Now the second part is to find out uh, what's the probability that you select exactly one girl and one boy, because you only selected two, so it has to be exactly that. Because there's really three possibilities, right? You could have girl, 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 boy, or boy, boy. And this doesn't matter the order because we haven't put any order on our selections. So the way you do this is you say, well, what's the probability of selecting a girl? The probability of selecting a girl is you got seven girls and you're choosing one of them. And you multiply that times the probability of selecting one boy. So you got eight boys and you're selecting one of them. So the probability of this happening is seven choose one times eight choose one over 15 choose two. The good thing is seven choose one and eight choose one is just seven times eight. 15 choose 2, remember it's 15 times 14 over 2 times 1. And so you can cancel that out, so it's just really 15 times 7. And so when you multiply those out, you notice that the 7s cancel. So in this case, the probability of one boy and one girl is 8 15. Another problem where you use some counting principle uh, is a coin problem. It says a coin is flipped 7 times. What is the probability that exactly 2 heads? Are showing okay so what's the probability of having exactly two heads well if you got seven coins there's a lot of different ways to do this and so let's just consider one of them just to start so the first thing uh, well first we could say how many ways can I flip seven coins well this is the accounting principle where you just have each flip there are two possibilities and so if you think about each flip separately it's going to end up being two multiplied together seven times, which is the same as two to the seventh. So the total possibilities is two to the seventh. It's a total different number of ways that you can flip seven coins and get and get and get different answers. So we want to find out how many what is probably that exactly two heads are showing. Well uh, in this case, if you think about it, I've got seven different coins and I want two of them to be heads. So of these seven, I'm representing each coin by a slot here. I want two of them to be heads. And so I can select any two of them. So the number of ways that I can select two heads is just seven choose two. So the answer to this problem is seven choose two, selecting two heads out of the seven, over two to the seven. Well, seven choose two is just 21. We do seven times six over two times one. And then two to the seventh is 128. Uh, neither 3 nor 7 go into 128, so you know your answer is 21 over 128. This one says what's well, the probability that at least 4 heads are showing? So that would mean 4 heads, 5 heads, 6 heads, or 7 heads. Well, the problem is the same. First off, we know the base, or the denominator, is 128. You've still got seven, car 7 coins you're flipping. If I need at least 4 heads, well, using this same theory, that would be 7 choose 4 plus 7 choose 5 plus seven, choose six, plus seven, choose seven, right? Choose four of them to be heads, five of them to be heads, six of them to be heads, seven of them to be heads. So we need to add those up. Seven, choose four is the same as seven, choose three. Um, and so that's going to be seven times six times five over three times two times one. So those cancel. So that's just 35. Seven, choose five is the same as seven, choose two, which we already found out to be 21. 7 choose 6 is always just 7, and then 7 choose 7 is just 1. You go only one way to choose all 7 of them to be heads. So all that is over 128, so the probability of this happen, happening is going to be um, 
42 plus 22, which would give you um, 64. So the probability of getting at least head showing, uh, at least four heads showing, is 64 over 128, which does turn out to be one half. So there's actually a half chance of that, a one half chance of that happening. Okay, the last one of these that we want to look at says, four vertices are randomly chosen from the following regular octagon. What is the probability that the vertices form a rectangle? Well, first off, how many ways can I choose choose four vertices? Well, there are eight total vertices, and I want to choose four of them. So that's the total number of ways that I can choose these four vertices. For instance, choosing G, H, A, and B would be choosing four vertices. Now that's not a rectangle, so that's not a positive outcome, but it is part of the total outcome. So our total outcome is just 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 over 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. The 8 can go away, that can become 2, and so there are 70 ways that I can select four points. Now, to form a rectangle, this is one where you actually gotta, gotta think about it and do some counting. The, the, the easiest rectangle is one that looks like this. And we could go through and, and, and prove this is, this is the case. Um, the, the way you would do that is, is we know um, when, when, we, when we draw those across, it's very easy to, to show that those would be 90 degree angles. So the question is how many rectangles that look like that can I do? Well. It's essentially picking, how many ways can I pick two, two points right next to each other? Well, FE, ED, DC, CD, AD, so there's actually eight ways, there's eight sides. However, if I select ED, that's also selecting HA. So there's actually only four rectangles that look like that. So we have four that look like that. And there's actually another rectangle that you may not notice right away. And the other rectangle is actually a square, and it looks like this. And this is a rectangle you can go through and prove. Um, that is a rectangle in a regular octagon connecting those vertices. This one is interesting because there actually only ends up being two of those. The other one you could draw would be here. And there's no other way to draw a rectangle. And so that means there are two squares that look like that. So the total number of positive outcomes is there are six rectangles that can be drawn, 70 total groups of four. So your answer is three over 35. So that's the total number of ways that you can pick four vertices from that regular octagon and get a rectangle.